if you knew this, like back in the comp days, you would have told me I was a fucking lunatic. I would have. I, I, I would have been like, well, what, what do I have to take? <laughs> make this happen. I don't want to be on anything. Jill is a student client in Hot Moms, and she's also a seasoned vet. She was a collegiate athlete. She's a gym owner. She's a trainer. Did you compete, Jill? I did. That's yeah. where the trouble started. <laughs> Some of it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I think that's where we followed each other or something like that. But anybody that's been in the game as long as she has, and it says 2001, is that when you became a trainer or you bought the gym? That's when I started training full time. Yeah, and teaching group fitness, and yeah, it was 01, somewhere in there, early 2000s. Jeez, okay, <clears throat> so it's been a minute. She's like a professional, yeah. professional. She owns a gym, but they do a lot of group fitness and one-on-one, but it's all in person there in Kansas City. And we'll give you her information at the end, don't worry. You can follow her, and if you're if you're local, you can go work out with her, because she's, you know, she's famous now. We're gonna go, I guess, let's start with, what, do you remember what it was when you reached out, what the main problem was? Yeah, it's the same problem it's been for, I can't tell you, like 10, 20 some years. It's this, you know, I've always been searching for like, I'm always tired, always. Like I've always got this adrenal fatigue thing going on. And it's especially since I did eight shows in like three years in my early thirties, 43, about to turn 44. You know, after that, I you put weight on like that. I was never taught how to diet properly. I was dieted um, for shows with like zero carbs. It was insane. Like looking back, (laughs) you know, I didn't know what that trainer and I had trainers, you know, that were um, running shows doing this to me. I just had no idea. And then fast forward um, fertility issues. I now finally have a four year old, but it was a struggle and if I had just, I mean, I'm glad I found you, but I cannot believe, and I've worked with other people that tried to reverse diet me and get me out of this mess. And it just has never been any, anything I could sustain or <laughs> was made to feel good about. People that's watching this, they don't know. Let me put reverse diet. We're going to hit that too. Cause people don't know. That's a new, it's, it's a term we know, but it's also, they don't know what we're talking about, but let's yeah. go chronic dieting. So oh. When it you comes know what? To- I think my first diet was in junior high. So this is a long thing. So so with doing the emotional work at Hot Moms or like looking at beneath the surface kind of thing, has that kind of, what, what's been provoking like, oh my God, this is where it came from? You know, I, I'm really tall. So I was always bigger than all the girls growing up in elementary school, high school. I'm almost six foot tall. So I was always bigger. It was never, I don't ever remember being like a hundred pounds like your friends are in junior high. So it was, um, it was girls making fun of me. You know, I was never thin. I was never small. Um, I was not athletic in any sense. I had no coordination. Um, but you're an athlete, right? Well, yeah. I mean, by happenstance, I got recruited for my height. Um, I was on the rowing team in college. So um, and I learned how to start working out towards the end of high school and started loving the gym and loved lifting weights. But um, yeah, so diet center, seventh grade, I think. Because kids were making fun of me. We have a lot of that. We had that scale video where Skip and I were going over like the scale and where it came from. And then we had a few people that had breakthroughs. Like, wow, mine started in middle school because I was tall. One girl, Rachel, she was like, I was tall and got called Lurch and picked on. And then it just kind of continued the cycle. So that's yeah. and that started. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So chronic dieting, though, the show thing. So let's talk about that. All right. Tell us what you did. People don't realize it. They they just know like, oh, I do keto or this is not like there's a whole nother level of fuckery when it comes to competition. So walk me through like, like the work on the story. Well, you know, I was when I started competing, I was already working as a personal trainer full time. Prior to being full time personal trainer, I was actually I'm an artist. I was a graphic designer. And then I I'm like, I hate this. I want to do fitness full time. You know, I'd get up at 
four, four thirty, and a pot or two pots of coffee a day while training for a show wasn't uncommon. My highest carb days were leg days, and I got sixty grams. The closer I'd get, yeah, that was my highest carb day. Um, they'd get my protein up to, I mean, I'd be up to two hundred grams of protein a day, and all kinds of vegetables. Could yeah. you even? Could you even shit though? I did. I never had a problem with that. A lot of girls that were under my team with me had a lot of those issues. I I never did quite to that extent. Um, I think I only lost my period once. They could never get me, like towards the end, I'd start getting lean enough, but I always struggled with putting enough muscle on and like, you know, oh, you're, well, you're so tall and two a day cardios. It, it was just, you know, you were running yourself down. Um, it was mood swings, a lot of mood swings. We're not even horny. I wasn't even horny. Like, I don't even, I don't even want sex. I, with- you know, when I was competing, I wasn't even, I was single. I wasn't even dating. Because um, your life, you were so encompassed in that. And it's money. There's no money in it. It's like not, it's, a, I don't even know how to word it. It's such an empty. Yeah, it just becomes this control thing. I mean, it's a, it's a another type of an eating disorder really it's exactly what it is like let's yeah. that's exactly what it is every yeah. time i get a girl they're like <clears throat> i want to do a show and i'm like why mm-hmm. why let's get to the bottom of really 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 why you know what i mean um because we can do a photo shoot you know know what we know now what would you have done would you have done would you have still done the shows would you have done photo shoot like what would you have done differently no because i learned a lot i learned what i don't want to do but at the time you know that's the only way i knew how to get that look like something happened when i was still in high school and dealing with like oxygen magazines that's when they came about this was in the mid 90s early 90s right and i just became obsessed a little bit with like how do i get that look and i remember finally seeing some of those girls i went and worked the arnold classic in the midst of all this and seeing some of those girls in person. And I'm like, holy shit, like there's no way I'm ever gonna, I mean, their shoulders were like bowling, but I'm like, okay, this isn't even natural. I'm never like, oh, it's baby. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I thought that was the answer to get that look. And it's what she's saying is the answer with like putting ourselves through misery, eating 60 carbs, being miserable equal looking that way. And I, I mean, I'm friends with Jenny Lynn, you know, uh, she's like three times Miss Olympia and what the shit she did. And she's still, well, I don't know. I know she still doesn't, but there's pieces of her that still feel like to get in shape, there needs to be tilapia and some green beans, you know, whatever. So, um, so you did this multiple times. You said eight shows, eight shows. And I think it was three years. All right. What's the leanest that you came in? Do you remember like how you were eating? Oh, 12, 15 egg whites. I mean, it was insane amounts of protein, vegetables, and no carbs, very little carbs, gallons of water. Um, Leanest I came in, I mean, it was not super lean. I could never, crazy. So anything I ever tried, you know, and then I remember coming off those shows and it like overnight, I feel like I would gain 25 pounds. And then it just started this cycle of me, I finished my last show about a year or so later, I opened my gym and knew I couldn't ever have the time to devote to that again, because that's what I thought it took. But then you get into this whole like, wait a minute, I'm a gym owner, but I don't look quite like I want to look. Started this vicious search and cycle for how do I do that? And you know, a lot of girls get um, the shiny object syndrome where these teams, because I'll be honest, like they are very, um, it's like when you get in that world and even when you start to, Hey, I want to lose weight. You kind of, you kind of gravitate towards somebody that's got a lot of shit popping. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, the girls look good. They're, they're elite girls look good. And they've got these testimonials. It's shiny object syndrome with these, these teams. Right. And dude, I found out the teams, bro, the teams are the ones, some of the worst things you could ever do. Well, they're all lying to you though. <laughs> like, there's so many other things that are fucked up that they're just not telling you. Bad. And it's like a money thing. There's so many people. It's cookie cutter, the, what the girls are doing. And I get it. We all want to feel a part of the bigger. We want to feel important and stuff like that. And I think that's where it really gets a lot of us when we're in that vulnerable state of wanting to be, am I good enough? Am I good enough? And trying to get there. And then we just do whatever. Cause it's like, 
Okay, so low carbonate, two a day cardio, never as lean. What was it that you saw from my advertising or whatever I was saying that made you think that we were different? Or did you think we were different? You know, I think I saw something to the effect, will you, anytime somebody addresses hormones and I see something about that, because I know that's like a big part of my problem that I haven't been able to completely figure out, even though I've tried other doctors here, that caught my attention. And I think I, I looked at your stuff a little bit and then I just, uh, you know, ignored it. And then you, um, I think you texted me or messaged or reached out like, Hey, have you watched my webinar? I watched some of it after you reached out and I kind of like walked through it and stuff. And I'm like, wait a minute, this whole, like what you're eating potato chips and you're doing this and this can't be real. <laughs> That's crazy. I know one of the coaches you're with, though. I know one of the coaches, and I swear I thought they promoted like you can't eat all this stuff. You know, the <laughs> coach that did help me lean back out for my wedding after I was done competing, and that worked, but it only worked for me for a few months because it was here's tilapia. It was so like, man, I didn't think this was going to be a competition diet again, but it really is. I never got taught how to make it flexible. I felt like a little bit berated maybe if I had a cheat meal, if I ended up needing. My husband's very um, social. We get invited to a lot of events. So I needed some flexibility some weeks more than others. And I just didn't ever learn that. I'd fall off the rails. Gotcha. What, now, would you binge eat or would you, um, What I guess, what would you, what would you do when you fell off the rails? Not necessarily binge, but I might like, turn that the weekend cheat meal the you know the whole cheat weekend would happen um and then the food prep for it was just like what I really wanted to get away from because here I am married now I can't spend hours and eons in the kitchen doing this every single night um so that was beginning to be a problem too Mm -hmm. and like so obsessive and so many of the you know I really got burnt out competing eating all this tilapia and egg whites and like oatmeal I just don't want to touch it anymore and that's here's what I was being given again and how do I sub this out oh no you really need to stick to that so you were just looking for a more like how is Casey eating chips and they are in shape yeah yeah so how- getting workouts you know even with that coach that helped me get you know where I wanted to be for my wedding um, and I even reached back out and worked with him a little bit after I had my son because I just couldn't get anything to shift down after having him. And I had done, I had had to do um, a little bit of drugs to get him, not a full IVF or anything, but I had to do some IUIs and things. So um, I gained quite a bit of weight. And here I was being handed like hour and a half workouts again. And I'm like, but wait a minute, I told you I have an eight month old thing. <laughs> That's what I want to say. Do you even know what that does to hormones? Someone that just had a baby that's in hormone hell, actually, and your lifestyle of being a go, go, go getter and coming from the competition thing. Like, do they even think, hey, she's probably already in like PCOS Ville. So we probably need to like back her off and then add calories in. Like, how do they? It was a mess. So uh, did you have any weight or did you lose any? Have you lost weight with us? Oh, yeah. I I can't tell you the last time I've been this lean. You know, my team is commenting, like, we haven't seen you this lean since your wedding. What are you doing? This is crazy. And then I'm up front eating potato chips. They're like, wait a minute. How would you tell somebody that's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. How are you eating? How do we eat chips? Like, how do you, how'd you make it work? Well, I was, I was very skeptical at first because, you know, sent me a template for my plan. And there was, she's like, well, what cereal do you like? What do you mean? What cereal do I like? You're going to give me oatmeal. (laughs) It was hard to wrap my head around at first. I mean, with my background, it's easy for me to follow. I already understood macros. For some reason, having the access to go in and change it and has made a huge difference for me. I just, I was like, hey, it's working. This is something that I could actually sustain. I feel better. I get my food ready still every night, but it takes me like 10 minutes to throw some stuff together. You know, it's so it's not taking away from my family and my what I want my lifestyle to be now as much. What did what'd you, um, or do you know where you started with calories when you met us versus where you're at now? God, I'm, I'm at like 2,100 calories now. I don't think I've ever eaten this much food. And you're like, and that's low. I mean, you, you're going to get up to probably 28. You could hit three because you're tall. Yeah. 
Um, you know, I was at that 14, 1200, 1400 calories, 1600 calories for years, even with that last coach that helped me post baby, I don't think I was above 1600. You know what that tells me though? That tells me that the coaches also have eating disorders because why else would they starve their clients? They don't know any other ways what that shows me. Yeah. You know, um, damn. I mean, you're how tall? I'm 5'11 and three quarters. 1400. I mean, I damaged my whole everything on 1400 and I'm five, five. You know what I mean? And 1400 was that low for me. So, wow. So you're now at 12, 2100 and it's taken y'all, how many months has it been? I started in October. Yeah. And wow. I'm down 15 pounds or so. Holy shit. And it just came off very gradual, obviously. Very gradual, which is fine. By the way, it's on fertility. So were your periods um, before your babe, were they just irregular or did you not ever? No, they were, um, totally fine. I actually, um, got pregnant and had a miscarriage and then I couldn't get pregnant again. And I was, you know, I told my doctor, no, I think we need to investigate this. And they're like, no, 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 let's just give it some time. I'm like, yeah, but I'm like, I think I was 36 or 37 at that time. And two years later, two and a half, three years later of me, like, no, I'm going to leave you. You're not listening to me going to a different doctor, going to a holistic naturopath combined with a fertility doctor, tons of research on my own and just trying to kind of figure it out. Damn. Um, lots of progesterone, lots oh. of, um, yeah, um, we don't like progesterone over here. You figured that out already, right? <laughs> we don't like well, and, You know, what's funny is after um, I had my son, I mean, I was a wreck too. So I tried to go back to my naturopath and that really wasn't giving me the energy I needed. So from a client referral, a couple of girls in here were using this doctor who I thought, oh man, he seems great when I met him. And he's like, oh, you need to be on progesterone again because that's what you needed to get pregnant. You should stay on it. And he's like, did my labs like, oh yeah, no wonder you're exhausted. No wonder. Um, and so I got, yeah. And I had no idea I've been doing that for the last couple of years, two or three years. I've been on this bioidentical. So that was the biggest shift for me with listening to you. You got um, off of it. I got off of it better. And you're like the second person. Now I talked in in seven days, the other girl, Nicole, she was terrified to, to switch because here I am some trainer, you know, saying, Hey, 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 come off the progesterone. But she also had a trigger from childhood where like some bad, something bad happened from something like this. But, um, she goes, I feel so much better. Cause really, unless you're trying to have a baby, we like to see progesterone at like 0.5. Yeah. So yeah, he told me I had no progesterone, pretty much no testosterone and put me on DHEA. And so anyways, has gotten that turned around. The Good. Samoralin is making a huge difference. I'm on my second month of that. We love Samoralin. And what she's talking about is there's Impamoralin and then there's Samoralin. And um, you can only get it through prescription. Uh, your IGF-1 is what they check to see. And if it's low, typically, you know, they say if any if it's under 200, you're, you're not going to get lean. But it has, it'll get your pituitary um, to where it can make everything that your body needs. And you will be more lean. It really looks like if you if you Google the benefits of Samoralin or Infamoralin, um, it's like a damn superwoman thing. And if you look at the benefits, it really is anti-aging, um, recovery, and, and it just really helps everything get better. So yeah, we love it. And it's only through prescription through, we have resources. So we have two physicians that we work with. Um, we don't share that typically to the public just because we have their information in a course and inside of hot moms, but people think that they can just go to our doctors and their world's going to shift. And I'm like, no, that's like saying a diet's going to fix everything or money's going to fix everything. You have to address everything holistically because if you don't eat like Jill's eating or learning how to do what Jill's doing and sleeping and taking care of yourself and learning why you're running so hard and you know, the emotional shit, it's surface level, you know, it's not going to really stick. So um, yeah, we love the Samoan and the Moreland. There was something I was going to ask you Okay, before. So let's just say you had 15, 20 pounds on you before you met us, right? That's kind of what you were wanting to get off. Yeah. What was it causing you to not show up as? Like, do you think that it was causing you to be less confident or, or where was it affecting you? Maybe a little bit, but I didn't realize it at the time. Ooh, tell me more about that. That's good shit. I didn't realize that maybe I had lost a little bit of confidence, you know, but now that I'm like, 
fitting back into some clothes that I had worn in a while or the way I was dressing previously at work. You know, I'm in a gym full of mirrors out there all day long. So <laughs> women, women don't realize it and they'll say, and what happens is they get so comfy in their pile of shit. And you know, over time we get used to something, right? Yeah. So, I'll say, so you're saying that your low energy, your no libido and not liking your body and not being happy with yourself doesn't affect you at work. They'll be like, oh no, I can show up at work. And I'm like, they're so in denial. It's not funny because yeah. that's not even possible. You're, you're not even playing at your, like you're yeah, saying. That's, the, that's a whole nother level when your body is kind of part of your work here. Yeah. I was talking to a girl that get up, she gets up and does like big time presentations. She's a corporate gal. And, um, she was saying something like just getting in shape because you're standing in front of people and the way you hold yourself differently and you you're proud of the way you look like that's that's how you get promoted you know what I'm saying like it's a big deal yeah. how we look and then deep down like I told Skip I'm like dude you don't like yourself when you're when we're when we don't like our bodies we don't like ourselves. yeah okay so now that you've lost the way you can you dress in the way you want to dress have yeah. you done anything differently, like shown up differently, maybe gotten more clients or been more bold in certain areas or even like in your sex life or uh, buying bikinis or whatever? Not yet. <laughs> I'm not quite there yet, but I'm getting closer. She's coming. She's getting closer. Yeah, I'm getting closer. What's it going to take? Which part though? The bikini or, or what? I'm not ready for the bikini yet. I'm okay, close. So so what's it going to take? Tell us what's in your mind. What do you want? What kind of bikini? What do you want it to look like on you? You know what? I just, I, I got to keep working my legs a little bit more. I've always struggled with that. Okay, let's go there. So is there. it that there's, you have, you know, what women would say, fat legs, cankles, are they too skinny? Like what? I've had cellulite since I was a kid. For me to be in shorts, I got to be like super lean. I need to see your legs. So this would be something where I would tell Jill, because she's a student, I'm like, all right, let's do your pictures before and now. And let me look at your legs. Let me look at what you're doing. And um, probably increase your calories, to be honest. And I need to see your hormones. But um, is it cellulite in the back, like under your yeah. ass? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's just body fat. What's your body fat right now? Um, 16.8, 16.5. So it's... That's low. That's low. So yeah. For Jill, I'd like to see her photos, right? And that would be a fun thing for me to look at is um, what I would come up. Like, I just need to see it and yeah. see what everything else is doing because, you know, you get somebody like Jill and most of the women that listen to, to me, we will do the work. We're not lazy. Like, if you tell us what to do and we're committed to the outcome, like, we'll do it, you know? Yeah. So, all right, let's say that was gone. Let's say you you look like you ain't never looked before. What kind of bikini would you be wearing? <laughs> I mean, one that I could still wear in front of my son, but it would be small. It would be small. <laughs> it would be small. I love that. I love that. Hell yes. That's it. That's what's up. Okay. So that's our new goal. And I mean, we always got goals. Like I got goals, you know? So yes, that's the new goal. And you know how we manifest? We buy the damn bikini. Have you bought the bikini yet? No, I haven't even looked. See, well, we got a Jill's project bikini for Jill. So we got um, all right. So what's some things that you wish you would have known before working with hot moms in KC show? You just don't have to kill yourself on the food. My body no longer responded to zero carbs. I had at least had figured that out, but I couldn't fathom how in the world I was going to get my calories up. Last fall, was it last fall? I also um, host continuing education for personal trainers in the area. And I brought in a presenter that was a nutritionist or his nutrition background. And he was talking about wanting to get female clients up to, you know, 22, 2,400 calories, getting them up there. And one of my trainers, you know, raised her hand. She's like, how in the world are we going to get our clients up to there? They're deathly afraid to eat more than 1,200 calories. And I was sitting there thinking, yeah, I don't even know how I'd get myself up to 2,000 calories. How did you? Getting weight on. Was it just a trust thing? You just said, what the hell? It's working so far. I'll just yeah. try. Yeah. Yeah, yeah totally. You, but I you don't have to lose at this point. And you don't have deep, deeply ingrained. You don't have a lot of deeply, deeply ingrained um, emotional trauma about that. There's maybe a little, you know, left, but you're, you're the type, like you say, you want it and you're open. You're open. There's well, so I had done so much that didn't work. It had been so long. And I had finally let go of 
well, I may never get quite back there, but I, I'm doing pretty good for where I'm at. I was already like, I'm pretty good for where I'm at already. Mm -hmm. If it could be easy, like somewhat easy, like I think you're telling me it could be. Yeah. Is that I'd like more. And that's what we need. We have, I tell everybody, like, you got to be at that point where you're fed the fuck up. You do. And then at that point, you're like, you, I can work with you. But the girls yeah. still have that, that, con, that um, they're not willing to see things differently. They're not willing to acknowledge they've got an eating disorder, that they're miserable, right? I can't yeah. work, with, work with those. But I guess the way, um, if people are listening, want to know how to get your calories up like that, and you're just, it's not easy to trust. We do think it's strategic. Of course, we have systems. I have a reverse dieting course. You've gone through that, right? Yeah. Did yeah. it help? Did it help like with the specifics? Yeah, totally. And it, there were so much small increases, you know, and when you're getting hungry, it's not hard to increase. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I would say that um, we, there's definitely a math side to it, just like everything's numbers. And at the end of the day, Jill was good about um, addressing your lifestyle. Like, were you sleeping seven plus hours? Most of the time because the fatigue is so prevalent for me that I've always needed that sleep. But, you know, here's the battle. My husband's a night owl. I like to be at the gym at 5.15, 5.30, get my workout in, go home, get my son ready, back and forth. But just having enough energy to be up a little bit later on the weekends and not to be like falling asleep at 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. Like I was pretty much willing to do anything at this point because it, it was affecting my personal life so much and it's, you know, still does if I don't keep control of that. But yeah, I, I mean, I would hit seven or eight hours. And that's what the, the food, man, every woman that comes down like, Oh good. You're eating more and more. And um, they have more energy. Like you're talking about, you do, you just have, I mean, it's not like a caffeine energy. It's like a, I don't know, man. It's like a kid. Like, you know, when they eat food, they get energy. It's like that. Yeah. That's the way I would describe it. And that's how it should be. It's being happy. It's like, I'm, man, I'm really like happy about my food. Like that's a big thing. Whereas someone I had worked with previously, I'm like, oh shit, it's time to eat Greek yogurt again. Like I just couldn't like, and then I'd start, I'd skip or I'd go off plan because it just didn't even sound good to me. And what about the, uh, the food tests that we've done? Were, were you eating? Oh my God. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So we do a food test and um, it tells you what foods you can and can't have, your uh, gut health that tells you, and it's not expensive, like 20, 30 bucks. Uh, uh -huh. We have it in a food test success course on caseyship.com forward slash shop, but it'll tell you all this shit. So you don't have to do food elimination. So what were you eating that you are that you really shouldn't eat via the food test? Yep. Um, well, before I got the food test back, you had me go gluten free, dairy free, which I was really cranky about. <laughs> I really didn't, but those were two things on there. Um, salmon was on there. Lemons. I was doing a ton of lemon water. Can't do lemons. Celery. Apples. Apples were on there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and, you know, the Greek yogurt, the whey protein, you asked me in that initial call if I was um, getting nauseous. I mean, yeah, every time I drink a protein shake, I'd be nauseous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and the reason I told her like, hey, no gluten, no dairy, I just knew because we do strategy calls. Like when somebody thinks they want to work with us, I'll do a strategy call. And when we got off, my goal is to help this person shift really quickly so they that they feel better as fast as possible. I was like, all right, take this out. Because I knew based off what she told me, which is if you're listening to this, if you have a history of being a sport dieter or you're eating less than 2000 calories and you're a go, 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 you probably have some underlying like adrenal thyroid issues and your gut, your, your digestion is being compromised. So adding all this milk and this gluten, it's just not, it's just not ideal. Like it's just not gonna serve you. Can you add it back? Yes. And I don't know if you've taken a test since then, but um, I couldn't oh have gluten at all. And yeah. now I can have it. So. Well, I mean, my brother and my mom, um, celiac now. So it probably just makes sense that I stay the course with them. Genetics are one thing, but however, it's like the family and what we talked about in generational trauma, like, like, let's just take poverty. If your parents grew up and one of them come from the poverty mindset, like not enough, maybe they come from 
parents or great grandparents from the depression, or maybe they lost a lot of money at one time of their life, or they just feel like money's hard to come by, or there's always, you know, somebody's going to take my money, or there's just a money block. The kids are going to be raised in a not enough household, right? It's wait to the fifth or wait to this. There's not enough for you money. So that's like, that's generational trauma. So typically like heart disease. Yes. While they say there are genetic markers that are going to carry over genetically. I get it. I, I believe in that. However, there's also behaviors that transfer down like me growing in the country. If I would have stayed the course, I would still be eating shit out of um in, in in buying mayonnaise industrial size container and cooking with sticks of real butter and frying every fucking thing and drinking sweet tea five times a day and now i'm gonna say well my family we all just have um diabetes well no you all just fucking emotionally eat and you eat when you're happy you eat when you're sad you eat when you're pissed off you eat you eat all the time and you don't know how to emotionally regulate because you were taught to not show your feelings because shut the fuck up, get your ass in there, pull your bootstraps up, get it done. We don't care if you're tired. So then, you know, you have to unlearn all this shit. But yeah, the food test is really fucking good because I just don't want women to think that, oh, Casey said gluten-free, dairy-free, so I need to take out gluten. Now they're miserable. Then they're going to go have pizza when they get stressed out and think they suck at life. No, we are not saying that. It is simply, it hits different. Like if I told you, hey, cut out the gluten, like you say, it kind of like, no, it, it, there's this resistance. But yeah, there was. Yeah. Totally normal. When you see the shit on a lab diagnostic test, it hits different, doesn't it? Yeah. It hits different. Like it's it's different. So yeah, I I love that food test. I love that. Here here's another thing that's amazing. Um, well, I think I shared this with you last weekend. I had a cheat meal and you know, I'm used to like and this comes from competing, and I know I shouldn't do this, but I step on the scale because I want to know what happened after my cheat meal. Oh, okay. So I stayed gluten-free and dairy-free on my cheat meal for last week. Um, and I ate what I wanted and nothing, nothing happened. My body didn't change. I didn't, usually I would gain like previous things I've tried. I, five pounds, I'd spend the next week getting it back off from one meal. That's an eating disorder. You want to weigh yourself to torture yourself to see if you got fat or you gain weight, like all that stuff. But like weighing yourself is good. But what she's saying, oh, my God, what did you have, by the way? Tell us, like, what are some gluten-friendly or dairy-free friends? I just made a cauliflower crust pizza with dairy-free cheese. (laughs) It was good. Okay. So that's good. Yeah. Okay. Because I didn't know if you were the type, like, I like to do burgers and... um, I do sometimes, but we did pizza that night. And then I had some... um, I did do some dairy-free ice cream with my son, so I had sugar. Good. Now, was it like the dairy-free, like almond ice cream or like the avocado? It was, I think it was an almond milk one. Dude, the fucking Ben and Jerry's dairy-free. That That's shit, what it was. It was good. That shit's money, honey. Yeah, that's it was really good. And that's what I'm saying. Like, you can have all this good stuff. We drink wine. We drink. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tequila. I've been drinking tequila. That's, that's what's been amazing. That is what, okay, that was what was on my food test. Wine. And I love some red wine, but I did not realize until about six weeks ago how bad I was feeling off the wine, mm. where now I'm just drinking tequila. Okay. So and sometimes I fit it into my macros and it's fine. Yeah. What uh, What were you feeling like after the wine? What are some symptoms we, that we women can look for? I mean, the exhaustion. I mean, give me a glass. I mean, I just felt terrible. The and next, not like, not like hungover terrible. Just like I didn't realize how much clearer I could feel without it. And then, you know, having a glass of wine at night and trying to stay up and watch a movie or get my son to bed or I was just shot. I'm the same way. I can have whiskey and I feel so much better the next day. I want it the next day still. But with wine, man, as much as I love it, even though I can have it, I know what you're talking about. I think it's the sulfites or salt, whatever you call it in there. I don't know if it's that and that we can't have wine, but man, yeah. and it makes you feel so good. It's like, fuck no, but the tequila, no hangover the next day, you feel good. Nothing. I feel great. What do you mix it with? Nothing. <laughs> a Hard. squirt of lime juice. She hard. And I just sip on it. Okay. <laughs> but hey, we can have skinny margaritas. Yes. Yeah. We can do that. We can do that. People are, you're blowing people's mind. You eat chips, fucking pizza, tequila. Yeah lost 15 pounds that's we're done we're done we're good 
Now, as far as workouts go, and we're almost done, is workouts. So how long are you training right now? About 45 minutes. It's about all I have. Dude, that's amazing, though. That's all you're training. And how many times a week? Four to five. Holy shit. And you were Usually, usually Wednesdays so help me where we keep it in at about 30 minutes. Okay. I mean, I've got a really finite amount of time. And, like, I mean, 45 minutes, 50 minutes is about all I have. We don't train long. I mean, I maybe I think I did like 20 minutes today. And she says, Sabrina, so when she signed up, we had one-on-one coaches that would like help you set up your accounts and stuff. Now we have it to where I teach you how to do it. And we, you still have access to custom workouts and stuff like that. So you, you still get the same like one-on-one touch. But yeah, if you don't have time, we who really has time to spend a, a fucking hour longer in the gym? Yeah, exactly. And with kids and trying to work and... And the energy. Oh my God. No, 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 no. She owns a gym. So has it helped you help more people, you think, from you learning all this? Totally. We train if some people. My clientele is very different from yours. We have a lot of retirees, a lot of post knee um, repair, um, knee replacement, but trying to get through to I'm I I am using, I've got one of my mom clients that's a private client of mine. I put her on and we're working on it. And and I think I just got her past the hump of letting go of gluten and sugar. Good. Okay, good. And you know, but, the but, but yeah, she's amazed. Like she wanted me to cut her calories again. I'm like, no, we're not going to cut your calories. It's go to the therapist. And that's where, that's what I want to think. If you think it's your diet, it's, it's your, it's soul work. But you know, the, I work with empaths. I work with light workers and Jill, she even is, is some kind of a light worker. She likes to help people. She helps people heal. There's something about her. Anybody that does that, I think has the spiritual connection and some people just don't have that. And sometimes that's when you do, you just keep it surface level shit. Hey, eat this, eat this, do this. And it works It's science at that point. But when you can't figure out like why you're struggling and that you want to keep slashing your calories and abuse yourself and really just starve yourself. Like you have to go deep and realize why you hate yourself so bad, you know? Yeah. I mean, the biggest thing is just to know that you don't have to live on fish and broccoli. Or, or not on vacation. People will say, oh, I just want to start when I get back from vacation. I'm like, that's when you need to start. So you learn how to go on vacation, have fun and lose weight. Just knowing that you can work or own a business and have a family and make progress on this. You don't have to wait until your kids are less needy or older. Oh, there's always going to be something. There's always going to be something to come up until you learn how to, that you're the most important thing. Somebody did have a question for you, Joe. Did Joe have any hormonal or, hormonal or blood sugar issues to overcome? Oh yeah, the hormone issues, still a work in progress. So I'm on a lot of, um, I have, my thyroid is really messed up, which was where all my energy stuff is coming from. So we're, I'm on doing a ton of um, thyroid supplements that they have me on in the morning and evening, um, adrenal fractions after lunch, and then the Samoralin just got added in, so. So blood sugar, let's get like in the mornings, did you ever feel very like hypoglycemic? Did you ever go through that? No, but you know, as long as I've been doing fitness and nutrition, I was already so conditioned into eating five, six meals a day. Um, I was previous to this training on empty stomach, coffee and water. Wow. What were your cortisol? Um, were you in the shitter? Was your cortisol really oh, low? Yeah. And my cortisol is a mess. That's what, that's why women want coffee that raises your cortisol. Cause usually they crave that, um, it will, A, they probably lack some kind of neurotransmitter, but it boosts your cortisol. That's that's what it does. That's because we don't have any cortisol. Um, but that's what she's wanting, hormones in the... Decades, I've been asking different doctors and trying to figure out, like I knew something was off my hormones, but you know, just like everyone else in this group has experienced, oh, well, you're in the optimal or you're close to optimal. There's no way, there's no way I can be, this can be optimal. Mm. Doctors take care of sick people. So you have to go to physicians that take care of people like us that, that yeah. are very healthy. There's just something that's off. You know, like my dad, they're not they're not gonna go to people like we go to. They're gonna go to regular doctors because you think yeah. they're gonna the way they eat, fuck no. The way they think, fuck no. Well, and the local naturopaths I've tried, you know, it was great for a period of time, but you'd be taking, I mean, twenty pills three times a day. It was just like it was as much work as food prep. 
Same. I've been there too. All of that. All. Yeah. I mean, it was. It was a lot of money too for supplements. Yeah. A lot of money in supplements that just didn't really have a huge dramatic effect. Well, good. So you're down 15 pounds now. Now it's Operation Bikini, um, Operation Body that you've never had, Improving Thyroid. Um, yeah. And you know, Synthroid. She didn't say Synthroid. This is all natural stuff that will eventually. And what it is is thyroid emotionally means when is it going to be my turn? When am I going to get mine? When am I finally going to get what I want? There's definitely a way. I've had a thyroid like a TSH of uh, four, and now I've had it as low as like 0.75 or 0.5. So there's definitely hope for you women listening. I promise. Commit to the soul work. Commit to the emotional work when stuff's not going your way. And um, how would you? What would you tell them? to how would you guide them to start looking at other options? Like if, if it's been longer than X, you know, this says, or if you're starving yourself, or if you think you low calories is the answer, then don't do it. Like what's a guidepost for them? I feel like you've tried everything. You've exhausted it all. I mean, what do you have to lose at this point? Money. Oh, money. Oh, psh, it's worth every penny and more. I've done it all. I've sold all the MLMs, all the different supplements and everything and to know like this quickly that this is something that I can sustain. Now, oh, is your hubby, does he like you better? <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, this is it, yeah. He just likes the fact that it seems easier, that I'm changing, I'm not complaining about anything. Yeah. Okay, and, good. And oh, this, so she had the gym during the shutdown. So how was that? Well, yeah, how did you handle with that stress? Whereas you normally... Oh, I, yeah, I, I popped up and wait during the shutdown, just like everyone else. Yeah, I forgot. I mean, you, you signed on when that was over with us. I was thinking you signed Yeah, because I was like, oh my God, okay, I got to get, get it back together. But I mean, just like everyone else, um, I was 100% virtual. Um, you know, I was really lucky and my daycare never shut down. So, yeah. We don't do daycare five days a week, but we do it three. So I dropped my son off. Our daycare has been open. I still had my three days a week. Yes, I'd come in this empty gym by myself for Heaven, baby. a whole day, but I had to work more. Virtual for me was way more work, way more management of my team, more connecting, more community virtual things for our members and clients. It was a hell of a lot of work. So just like everyone else, I started drinking every day. I wasn't, I didn't have time for my workouts, comfort food, right? Who mm -hmm. wants to like well, that's and weigh food and figure it out? Well, you probably thought then, like, what if you had what you knew now though? I wonder how you would have. It would have been so much better because I would have felt like, oh, well, wait, I can work my nightly popcorn in like I do now. Mm -hmm. I love it. Such an inspiration. Seriously. Well, yeah. I'm, excited. I'm excited to watch um, Jill 2.0. You do cardio? God, no. I don't do any cardio. Hold on. I'm, I'm going to get on the treadmill for 20 minutes here in a little bit, but that's it. So how long have you been doing that? I haven't done cardio in a super long time, even before you, because I got burnt out on it. Oh, yeah. I knew a girl there in Kansas City that was working with a big trainer. She got, she um, broke or fractured her foot bone because they put her on so much cardio. Oh, yeah. Two 45 minute sessions a day. Fuck. The new women are so tough. Um, okay. So, wait a minute. So, you're eating, you went from 14, almost, Lord have mercy, is that 800? I don't know, 800 or so more calories, no cardio, and your training is cut down from what, three and a half hours to maybe not even one? Yeah. Holy shit. If you, if we would have. <laughs> If you knew this, like back in the comp days, you would have told me I was a fucking lunatic. I would have. I, I would have been like, well, what, what do I have to take? <laughs> make this happen. I don't want to be on anything. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I love it. I love it. I love the heart of a competitor because they will. They'll, we'll do whatever it takes. We'll do whatever it takes. Yeah, uh, and the sacrifice is too great. Well, girl, I really appreciate your time. I know it's valuable. So if anybody's in the Kansas City area, what what is it can they can they come there and work out anytime or is it like a just a personal training gym it's just a personal training gym but you know message me if you want to pop out a more intimate environment we've got everything you need in here but you can come say hi yeah. Yeah. okay so Jill, what's the gym called excel wellness studio in overland park 
Kansas. Oh, Overland Park, Kansas, and it's Excel, like E X C E L Wellness okay. Studio. Yeah. Well, we'll put the link in this podcast. We'll put your um, social media, your you. Facebook, Instagram, and all that. So if you do travel and you want to hit it up, or maybe you're listening and you want to go work out with her, that's where you, or can they work out with you or no? You booked up. Yeah. We'll, we'll fit it in. Yeah. Look at her ass. Yeah. Doing extra, Lord Jesus. 5 a.m. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time because 2.0. Got it.